Why commit? Uh, that's a great question. And the funny thing was, I had never asked myself that question until I got asked to do this TED Talk about a month ago. And so I'm like, no big deal. Um, let me think about it. I'm sure the answer will pop into my head. And blank, nothing. It had just been, I guess, innate. And I had committed 15 years of my life to go to the Olympics, to get a medal, and I couldn't verbalize why. So I did what I usually do when I don't know something. I Googled it. I'm like, Google's got to have the answer. And I uh, Googled commitment, and a definition pops up. And what I get is um, a definition in two parts. And the first part is the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or activity. Good, um, that was helpful. And then the second part was an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action. So here you have passion and obligation. The passion brings you into something. You love it, you need to do it, it fulfills you. And then that sense of duty, engagement, obligation, that, that keeps you in it when, going the wrong way, <laughs> it keeps you in it when it's difficult and you feel like quitting and you feel like there, the obstacles are insurmountable insurm and you ask yourself what you're doing. So once I had this definition, I was able to come up with some actual reasons of why I committed. And I had three reasons. The first was it gave me purpose. I found meaning, I found clarity. I found that I was building my life around a goal and not just around day-to-day -day enjoyment. And for me, that made me happy. Second of all, it helped me through the tough times. And in anything that you're gonna do in life that's worth doing, that's gonna be meaningful, that's gonna have an impact, it's gonna be difficult. You're gonna feel like quitting. And if you don't have this picture at the end of something you really want to accomplish, it's gonna be very easy to quit or give up when it's tough. And the third reason is that talent is just not enough. And my motto is it's 90% hard work and 10% talent. Yes, talent may give you a huge head start, and you may see that when you're seven years old and you can really see the disparity, but as life goes on, it's, you know, it's the tortoise and the hare, and it's willing to, to dedicate your time, your en energy, sacrifice all these other things that you love for the sake of the one thing that's truly important to you. So now that I was able to have this basic understanding of commitment, um, I wanna share my story with you. And it really starts with my mom's commitment. And I couldn't have gotten to the rink without her. She drove me for 10 years before I could drive myself. She would take me to the rink. She would film all my practices. She would bring a, a hair dryer to the rink because my, my hands and feet would freeze and I would always have frostbite. And um, she even came up with great ways for me to break in my skates. Um, I got these really stiff leather skates and she would be like, all right, I've got an idea. She was from Russia um, and she would soak my tights in hot vodka and she would make me put them on and then lace my skates as tight as you could and then she's like, all right, just march around the house and do squats and you'll break them in. So I smelled like a raging alcoholic at the age of eight, but, but it worked. And um, now I can share, I guess, my commitment with you. Um, I was a very crazy, wild five-year-old. I had way too much energy. I exasperated all my teachers. I got a note home every day from school saying that I was doing cartwheels when I was supposed to sit still, and that wasn't allowed. Um, I also had a tough time listening. Um, when art was over, I would keep going, and the teachers would say, it's time for math. Please get out your math workbooks, and they would repeat it. All the other kids would listen, and I would just be there coloring, doing my thing, and the teacher came up to me, sat down you know, at kindergarten on those little chairs, like right next to me, trying to intimidate me, and said, I said art was over. Why did you not put away your art project? And to me, you know, I was like very upset to have to leave my art, and I looked at him, and the answer was obvious to me. I wasn't done, and I just was about to resume drawing, and it was principal's office. We have a problem. Um, so this was me, and I applied this passion to everything that I love to do, this, this tunnel vision. And you can see it um, 
and everything, and I was lucky that I found gymnastics. My parents were lucky I found gymnastics. I was there for four hours a day, and that used up my energy and prevented me from wrecking the house. Um, so this period of my life represents that passion part of the commitment, being excited to do something and having it consume you. And about seven years later, when I was 12, I really took on that second part of the definition, that obligation, that sense of duty and sacrifice. And two big decisions or, that I had to make this year. First was to be homeschooled. Uh, I was a good student. I loved school. But I wasn't thinking about going to an Ivy League college or becoming a doctor. I wanted to skate. I wanted to go to the Olympics. And I knew in order to do that, I couldn't be wasting five or six hours a day at school. I needed to be at the ice um, during the best times, have more lessons, and treat this as a professional. Um, another thing that happened that year was I nearly quit. I had been skating every day. It was my love, it was my life, and I could not get this job for the life of me. I had bruises all up and down my side. I was soaking wet and freezing from falling in puddles, and just tears and tears every day for a year. And I said, Mom, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't. I'm not happy. I'm miserable. I don't want to do this. And she said, you know what? Give it two or three months. Don't make this decision in a day. And luckily I did, and I decided to keep plugging away, and a year later, the more fall was when there was a finally get this double axle, and I made it to my first international. So if I hadn't had that sense of commitment and knowing that five years down the road I wanted to be at the Olympics, it would have been very easy to walk away and go to the beach with my friends and enjoy my childhood. So just to give you a little bit more of an idea of what training is like, this is a map of Southern California. These red dots represent all the ranks that they go to on a weekly basis. Why are there so many? Well, my mom and I would drive three or four hours a day, a whole day, and there were sessions we'd skate in the morning. We'd go to a different rink in the afternoon at a different ice time. And then you would go to your spin coach, your choreography coach. You would have technique lessons, jump lessons, video lessons, um, harness lessons. And it was, it, it took all day, but that, that wasn't it. In order to supplement the rink time before and after, we would go to all these new exercises. And that represented doctors, physical therapists, acupuncturists, costume designers, where I go to get my music cut, um, sports psychologists, um, skate sharpeners. You name it, you got it. I mean, we were, we left in the, um, in the morning at around 6 a.m. and I got home at 6 p.m. and my mom cooked dinner, I did homework. We did this every day for 10 days before I could drive myself. But it paid off. And I made it to the Olympics. And it was the most thrilling moment of my life. To know that I had made a commitment, dedication, and sacrifice, and I was an Olympian. But it wasn't just joy. It was bittersweet because I had just missed the podium. And I thought that I would go to the Olympics and get a medal and then go to college and just keep going on with my life. And I didn't. And I had to make a decision. Would I go to college with my peers or would I commit four more years to stay? And luckily for me, the passion was so great that it wasn't even a question. I moved across the country to train with Tatiana Drosseva, coach of five Olympic champions, legendary, intense Russian coach. And my family and I lived in a Hollywood suite with three pets and all our stuff for about a month and a half looking for a place to live. And this was sacrificing commitment on a whole nother level. Um, family vacations were gone. I thought I could take one or two college classes on the side and skating. No. She said, you sleep, you skate, you eat, and that's it. You want to be the best? That's what you do. And I trained on holidays. Fourth of July, Christmas, New Year's. I was at the rink, and after the rink, I would go to the gym, and I would do sprints. And it was very intense, but I was doing everything, and I had improved in ways that I, I didn't even think possible. And all that hard work and decisions like that for those four years brought me here. And I wanted to look at someone up in Juno at the Winter Games. But it was such a confusing moment. I mean, first of all, I wanted to get a medal, start that. Um, but the main thing was, standing on the podium, 
you can't be US flag. I had no idea what I was going to do tomorrow. This was the end of a way of life, of a commitment, this purpose, this drive that I had, this reason to wake up every day. And I had no idea. But luckily, I was busy. I knew when I was like, no, there's a lot of work to do. I was um, touring around the world for eight to ten months a year, 120 shows, performing live with incredible musicians. Um, I wrote a book, had so many incredible opportunities. And after a few years, I realized I was simply cashing in on 15 years of sacrifice and hard work. And yes, it was amazing, but I wasn't building anything new. It was a little empty, not hollow, and I wanted to find something else to, to build my life on around. And the 2010 Olympics were coming up, and I decided I would go back here. And I would, I would train, I would look for that sense of purpose again. I left a nice beach life, and I moved up to a tiny studio in the mountains to train my 13 year olds. I was kind of fat. Um, they're pretty excited, and their bodies don't hurt yet. And you know, from 9 in the morning to nearly 8 or 9 at night, I train all day. And it was difficult for me. I had a lot of injuries that year, equipment problems, the pressure and stress of trying to make up their own routine. But I was so happy. I woke up every day with this sense of purpose, and life was clear again. Do you ever feel like you just too many choices, so many things pulling you in different directions, and you don't know what to do. You could do anything, um, or you kind of live every day, and it's, it's nice, but you're not, you don't have anything to show, you don't feel like something. Well, despite how difficult and perhaps miserable that was at times, I was so happy. I was elated because I had this goal. And ultimately, that brought me here. I gave my last two competitive performances at the 2010 U.S. Nationals. And they were so special and memorable. And committing again in a different time and place in my life, I learned new things about myself. And that was so enriching. And the reason I tell this story is I did not make a very good team, and maybe this wasn't a success. But to me, the most powerful aspect of commitment is the way of life that it gives you, that it, it enriches your life, it gives you meaning. And that's all I want. And you know, there are a little bit of trivia that I often coming back to me when I was 25. I was finally able to articulate what a little nervous felt like. Everyone said, oh, it's butterflies, you're a little nervous, what it feels like. Um, your heart beats really fast. And like, no, 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 no. Waiting to skate this performance, I was in my hotel room. And I remember just trying to take my nap after my practice and feeling like I had burning acid running through my veins with a thousand pounds of pressure just crushing my chest. I'm like, that's what nervous looks like. Okay, I can, I can actually describe that now. Um, so with that, I closed this chapter, no regrets, taught me so much, and brought me here. So we're all here. And I'm dedicating myself right now to a Columbia education. But why? What is, why are we all here? And I think what we're really here for is that search for the next passion, the first, maybe the last passion, of something worthy of committing to, dedicating your life to, and a commitment to have a way of life, to have meaning in your life, wherever that leads you, is what I think is the most valuable part of commitment. And with that, a light bulb went up in my head, I'm like, aha, finally got it. And if you're a Columbia student, you probably take it in contemporary civilizations. And my favorite readings were Aristotle. And I remember that he said, everything that we do in life, the whole point, is for the sake of happiness. Happiness is the one thing we don't really do for the sake of anything else. So whether we want to be famous or rich or respected, powerful, we want to do it because we think it will make us happy. And it's when I realized that, you know, happiness is the meaning and purpose of life. The whole aim and end of human existence. So why commit? Commit because it gives you purpose. And I guess for me, purpose makes me happy. So, thank you.